What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be working with iOS. So I'm going to show you how to build out a shopping cart, just a very simple shopping cart where you're able to select an item, add it to your shopping cart, and then see the subtotal right there in the app. I already have some of the UI built out. We're using Swift UI and we're also going to be using a little bit of combine and we're also going to be using AWS Amplify for our local storage. So with all that said, let's go ahead, jump right on in. And as you can see, we do have some of the stuff set up and just so that you can see the app itself, this is what the app looks like. So I have a fake product in there. This is just dummy data so far. And then you can hit plus, you can create a new product and then we have our shopping cart. So all of our UI is kind of laid out. We just need to add in the functionality, right? So in order to go over the functionality, we actually need to take a look at the data schemas that we're going to be working with and know the relationships and how they work. So let's go ahead and jump over to the browser. And as you can see, I'm over here at sandbox.amplifyapp.com. So if you want to just, you know, follow along, you can check the link in the description and then you can also build out your back end uh, the same way that I did here at the sandbox. So I have a cart and cart's nothing special. It's just a way to keep track of an ID. You know, usually you would have like a user and there's a cart associated with it and there might be other items and stuff like that or other properties that are associated, but we're gonna keep it very simple today. And then we have a product which is obviously gonna have a name, right? You gotta know what you're buying. And then you also have to know the price. How much does that thing cost? So keeping it very simple. Now, how do these two things work together and how do we build a relationship? Well, one thing that we could do is we could add a relationship right here, but it's not going to give us the ability to query by the cart ID, which is what we're going to need in order to get the cart and all the products that are associated with it. So in order to tie these two objects to together, the cart and the product, we're going to make a third, a third model, which is going to have a one-to-one -one relationship with both of them called a uh, cart product. So we have our cart product and this is going to represent the, the relationship between these two items since it is a many to many relationship. So let's go ahead and add a relationship for both of those, um, for both of those types of models. So we have the cart, this is a one-to-one -one relationship. And then we also need to add a relationship for the product as well. And it's just going to be lowercase and just like that. Now, additionally, since we're going to be working with data store and we can't send custom GraphQL queries to Amplify, what we can do is a slight little workaround, which is add in the cart ID right here. So whenever we create a cart product, we simply add the cart ID as another field that is required in order to initialize this object so that we can query against it. All right, so as you can see, cart ID is ID, and we just wanna make sure that that's required. We wanna make sure that a cart relationship is required, and then also a product relationship is required. So now we have our three models. We can display all the products and we can have a cart that might be associated with like some user. Um, but what we're really going to be querying is the cart product object that have the same cart ID as the cart that we're going to create. So let's go ahead and go over to test. It's going to walk us through a couple of the steps to get up and running. I need to pull this right here. Now, if you need the amplify CLI, make sure you pull this one. And back over here in the terminal, I just paste that in and it's going to pull down this project. All right. So as you can see, it was successful and I was also able to open up the project. And then we're going to go back over here. And then the next step is to add in the Cocoa Pods. I already did this step, so I don't really need to show you guys that. But I didn't do this part right here. I need to make sure that I'm configuring Amplify in our app object. So let's go ahead and do that now. I already have a function ready for it. And we just get rid of this init method that they wrapped it in. All right, and as you can see, we have an error right here, so, and that's because we don't have those models inside of our project. So let's go ahead and add those in real quick. All right, I'm gonna go to the root of our project, go to Amplify Generated Models, and I'll just add all these models right on into the project. So add those bad boys. And now we should no longer be getting this error right here. So perfect. So we should be able to configure Amplify, and that should be good. Let's go ahead and run it just for a good test measure. And bam initialized amplify so we're good right there 
and let's go ahead and head back over to our first view, which is the products view. So this is gonna be the view where we're actually able to select the different products and add them to our cart. So the very first thing that we wanna do is we wanna be able to actually list out all the different products. So over here, I have a view model at the bottom. Here we go. So I have a view model right here and I need to have an array that's gonna hold the different products. So let's go ahead and add that in there. All right, so we have the products array. We need a function that's going to actually get those products. Let's add that in. All right, so we have our function that's going to get our products. So we're just gonna do a query on data store for anything that is a product. So we just wanna see all the products, right? And then we, want, we need to make sure that we return to the main thread and then we're only gonna just be printing out completions. We're not gonna do any error handling today. And then obviously we need to update the products array. So we're just gonna set all the products that come back and we're gonna set it to our array right there. Now we also need to observe when we create a new product because as you can see right here on the preview, we have this plus button. So I'm gonna actually be adding in products as well. So we need to be able to observe that in the view. So let's go ahead and add a function that observes new products. All right, so there we go. We have an observe products function right there. So we're just gonna add the publisher for um, any product object. And we're just gonna make sure that we're only checking and doing um, any logic based off of if it's a create method, which it obviously is gonna be. And then we need to decode the model that's um, provided by the subscription. And then we just need to, once again, return to the main thread and update our products array. So. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're calling both of these methods inside of our initializer of our view model. All right, and there we go. So this is enough to actually display data, but we don't actually have any data in our database. So we need to also update the new products view. So we have a new product view right here. And in the view model, what we need to do is we need to add a function that is going to actually create a product with this product name and this product price. All right, so as you can see, we added this create product function and we're just simply gonna create a new product with the product name and the product price. And then we just simply do data source dot save that product, return to the main queue. And then all we're gonna do is just simply print out the fact that we did save um, the object. Now we don't need to do anything like pass the object back or back or anything like that because we're already observing products on the, um, the products view. But what we do want to do is make sure that since this is going to be presented modally, we want to make sure that we're going to dismiss it. So we have this presentation mode up here on our new product view. Let's go ahead and pass that into our view model um, with a new function. All right, and we have um, this configure with presentation mode on our view model, and we're just simply going to store the presentation mode in our view model. So now I just need to make sure that I call it, and we can do that on the on appear uh, for our um, for our navigation view. So whenever that appears, we're just going to say a view model dot configure with presentation mode like that. So this we'll make sure that we're able to pass that configuration mode over to our view model, and then we can use it down here in our sync, and we can just dismiss the view after we're done saving the model. And just like that, so we have a capture list, and then we're just accessing the presentation mode, the wrapped value, and then calling dismiss. So now whenever we save something, we should actually go back to the products screen and then also see it update. So let's go ahead and run it. Let's make sure that everything's working as expected. Oh, I forgot to update some of the UI. So let's head back over to the products view and let's update some of this UI up here. So 
instead of working with this dummy um, this dummy uh, tuple, we can actually work with our array of products by saying view model dot products. And then the ID can just simply be the ID of that object. And then the product name will be obviously the product's name and the price will be the price. All right, so we have those set up. I think that is pretty much all we needed to update so far. So let's go ahead and run it again. All right, so let's go ahead and do the plus. Now we can add a product name and let's just say a burger is gonna cost you at least six bucks, right? So we hit submit and we see that it's being printed out, but we're not getting the dismiss and that's because we actually forgot to call the function. Why do I always do that? I always forget it. It wasn't you, you didn't forget. You remembered, right? You remembered. I didn't remember. All right, right here, what we can do is we can update this to actually just simply call the view model function. So view model dot create product like that. Run it again, let's try it again. All right, so now we can say a burger and a burger is gonna cost us at least six bucks, at least, at least. We hit it, bam, look it, it's already there. Let's run it, let's try it again, make sure that we can add a cheeseburger because we ain't no suckers and cheeseburger you know it's gonna set you back at least eight bucks because cheese is expensive so cheeseburger is eight bucks we have the burger for six bucks now we need to focus on adding it to our actual cart and as you can see here we don't really have any real data going on we just have like this dummy data right here somehow product name cost five bucks and the subtotal is twenty dollars so some weird fees going on there, I guess. But anyways, let's head back over to the product view. And now we need to add to cart. We need to have a function that adds to the cart. All right, so we're gonna have this add to cart um, function right here in our view model of our products view, right? But the problem is, is that we're going to be creating a cart product, remember that? So we're gonna be working with, we need to have a cart and a product and the cart ID in order to create this cart product because that's the actual object that we're going to be saving. So in order to kind of like dummy this out, what I'm going to do is going to go back over to my app, my app object, and one, we're going to create a singleton that's going to be able to hang on to the cart and the cart ID. But in order to actually create that cart, what we want to do is we want to seed that data into our local database. So let's start by seeding the data. So down here in our app object below the configure amplify, let's go ahead and add in a function that will seed that cart in. All right, so as you can see, we have the seed cart if needed function. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna query data store um, for a cart and we're looking specifically by the ID. So either we're going to have something saved there or not, and that's gonna actually return us an optional cart, which is what this query queried cart is right here. So this is an optional cart. Now, if that cart exists, we'll have it and this will actually have a value, right? which means that we'll be using that queried cart. So we can just return that queried cart and then we just need to make sure that um, it's going to match the return type of any publisher cart and data store error. But if we don't already have that cart saved, then what we need to do is we need to create that cart. So then I created this cart with the cart ID, which is just gonna be this global variable. Uh, like I said, usually you're gonna be working with a user object and all that stuff is gonna be passed around, but Essentially, you'd be passing your user ID or whatever right there so that things would stay consistent. But we're going to just use this global ID to create that cart. So we're always working with that same ID and then we're saving it. From there, we just need to make sure we're saving on the main thread. And then once again, we're going to sync. So 
I actually forgot that we need to do this in the view model uh, because we're going to need to hang on to the token of the sync. So let's go ahead and create a view model for our app object, which is this app object right here. So all the way at the bottom. All right, so as you can see, I created this view model um, and we're just gonna call the seed cart if needed. And I also added this um, property called token where we can um, actually store the sync of our, um, our query. So we can just say token is equal to that. So now it's not gonna fall out of memory and we're gonna make sure that we're able to actually properly seed that object. We just need to make sure that we have an instance of our, um, of our view model. All right, there we go. So we have our view model and we have all this set up and going, looking good, looking good. So now, now that we know that we're gonna be actually seeding a cart, what we can do is we can create a, a singleton that we can pass around once again, choose your own data pattern, but this will allow us to get the cart for the current user, right? So let's go ahead and create a singleton that will hang on to the current cart in use. Okay, so really simple little class, just a little baby singleton right there. And we have our current user cart. So let's just make sure that we're updating that in our sync of the um, of the seed if needed function. So let's just add that right here. So session manager share dot current user cart is equal to the cart that was just created or queried. Now we can head back over to the products view. And then when we're doing the add cart, now we can actually create that cart product object. All right, so we have our cart, right? We're just checking the session manager for the cart. Then we're going to create our cart product, passing in that cart and the product that is passed from our function. And then obviously the cart has a cart ID. So then we just simply save it, receive on the main thread, and then we're just simply printing that out. Uh, there's nothing to do on this screen per se whenever we have a new cart product saved, right? And then we just need to make sure that we're storing that in the tokens. So let's make sure that we're calling this add to cart function whenever we actually hit the button to add it to the cart. So let's just find that button. All right, there it is. So add to cart, we're just gonna do view model dot add to cart and we are being passed the product in this block right there so we'll pass it in here and let's go ahead and run that and let's see if we can get it to um, print out the saved cart product oh so i made a mistake the problem that we have here uh, is that i am actually doing something very naughty very, very naughty. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're not going to be using Amplify before the configuration um, before the configuration kicks in, right? So when I do this view model right here, it's actually attempting to do this seed cart if needed before the configure the the configure Amplify function is called. So let's get rid of that. And what we'll do uh, instead is we can do on our tab view. We can do on appear, or actually we could just do it right there in the view model or in the initializer. So we could just do view model and then we can seed cart if needed. So let's run that again and we should get a crash this time. All right, so as you can see, we still have our objects in there. And then if we go ahead and add a cheeseburger to our cart, we get this saved cart, um, cart product and then it shows the information. So, Let's take a look at our app and if you go over here, once again, we're still working with dummy data. Let's update our cart view now. So over here in cart view, we want to make sure that we're getting rid of the dummy data by adding in a new view model. So I don't actually have a view model. Let's go ahead and add that in now. 
All right, so I added this view model and I wanted to point out that we are gonna be working with products. Even though we're planning on using the cart product in order to do the query, at the end of the day, we do only need to show products in this view. So that's what we're gonna actually be working with. Now back up at the top in our list, we're not gonna be working with this dummy tuple anymore. We can just actually pass in our view model um, dot products. And I didn't actually initialize it so we also need to do that all right so we have our view model we're passing in the products we can do by id and this should still show correctly because it's showing the product name and the product price which is perfect um, we do have a problem right here with the subtotals so in order to calculate the subtotals let's go ahead and create um, a computed property up here as well or down here i should say All right, so as simple as that, we're just gonna do products that reduce, starting off with zero, and then um, for each iteration that it goes through, it's just simply gonna add the price to each other. So yeah, and now up over here, we can change this out for an actual value. So view model dot subtotal. And now we'll be working with real data. So let's run this, make sure that everything is building correctly. We're not doing anything yet, but we should at least be seeing that we have zero right here for the subtotal and then we don't have anything in the cart. Now what we need to do is we need to actually do the query that's going to get us our, um, our products. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, and there we go. So now we're going to have this function that gets the products. Now, um, I decided to just go with grabbing the, the cart ID from the session manager, uh, however you wanted to go about doing that. But then we're just gonna do this uh, data store.query and once again, getting the cart product because that's what that's the, the relationship that's going to allow us to query right here, this, this um, predicate right here for the cart ID, which we do know because it's associated with the user and we're assuming that we have all the user's information. So we were checking the cart product where the cart ID is equal to our current cart ID. Then we're going to map that array of objects um, and we want to actually do an inner map. So we're going to change the results of this, which is an array of objects and we're going to turn it into a different array. So then we have to map the map, <laughs> map, in, map inception, and we're gonna just simply grab the product out of, um, out of that array of objects. So each product in that array. And then once again, main queue in updating our products. So I think that's all we really need to do. We just need to make sure that we're calling this get product somewhere so I could do it in the initializer. All right, so now we have the get products. Oh, and we do need to also observe new um, products. So let's also add a, an observe on this as well. All right, so I made a couple of adjustments um, just because I didn't think about the observe uh, products problem, right? So I changed uh, token to tokens. It's going to be a set of any cancelable and then um, we're just gonna store this sync right here for the get products. And then for the observe cart, um, we're also gonna store in that token. So minor change and some of the other stuff. But going back to essentially observing the cart, so once again, we want to make sure that we're only working with the current cart ID, and then we're going to um, watch this publisher. So we're gonna only observe the creates. We're going to turn those creates into a cart product. Now, if that cart product has the same ID as our current user's cart ID, 
um, then what we'll do is we'll, we'll grab the product off of that cart or that cart product. I mean, we're going to grab the product from the cart product object, right? And then we're going to append that product to our products array. So now what we just need to do is we need to make sure that we're observing the cart as well. And if we run this, we should be good to go. All right, so we have our burger, our cheeseburger, and remember that we did add a cheeseburger to the cart, so we have cheeseburger right there, and we have a subtotal. So let's go ahead and create a new product, and let's get some french fries with that. And fries are gonna set you back like four bucks. And we're going to, let's double check, make sure that the car, I didn't, I didn't pull nothing on you. We're gonna add that to the cart. We take a look at our cart, bam, it's all updated and we can see that our subtotal is $12. Oh yeah. All right, so that's pretty much it. So I just wanted to show you how to build out like a basic um, you know, shopping cart. And if there are any other areas that you feel that I can cover that you're interested in, then make sure that you leave a comment down below. If you learned something from this video, then make sure that you subscribe. Uh, but overall, that's gonna be it. We just covered how to get up and running, creating products, creating a shopping cart, observing all those objects using Combine, Swift UI, and AWS Amplify. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.